Right guys, this is going to be a video showing you how to solo the heroic version of the Whisper of the Worm quest. If you're just interested in the run, then skip to the time on the screen. For the rest of you, I'll show you what I'm using um, and why. So first I'll talk about weapons. I'm using Better Devils and Mananen as my loadout. Notice they both have explosive rounds on, which I value in this solo. Mainly because you're taking a ton of blights down on your own. Because it's solo, of course. Um, so... I favour the explosive rounds for that. Also, um, it's a gun that I've used for ages and ages, so I'm used to the recoil pattern. It just fits my playstyle. Coop, I don't like as much because of its recoil on console. Um, ghost bullets, all of that business. It just doesn't feel nice to me. Although I love the perk, if Rampage was on Devils, on my Devils, I love it. This is why I like DFA, because DFA is... Um, Similar recoil pattern to this. So I do like the FA, just the magazine size I don't, I'm not a massive fan of. So that's why I'm using explosive rounds. Not to say you can't use coupe. For those who are good with coupe, put coupe on. Fine, that's fine. Mananen, um, make sure that you carry in three of them. So you want a void, arc, and a solar one, which I'll get into why you should have all three. Our power weapon's going to be Whisper of the Worm. So this is the best best power weapon to use in the game right now and for this solo of course as well. Which you'll notice as well, I have box braving on it, so that means my catalyst is 100 percent which is great, that has box braving on it, but more to the point that this is 100 percent because um each week there's gonna be modifiers on your on your whisper missions. And it's basically a burn that rotates between Solar Void and Arc, which it's solo this week. And Blighted Hunger, which is on every week. So it reads, grants bonus damage in the Whisper Heroic activity based on the fire team leader's cut list. So we're going in solo, so I'm 100%, I'm going to get that bonus damage that it's talking about. If you are 13%, 0%, 50%, you're not going to get that bonus damage like you would if you were 100 so that's important for people to know. If you cannot one-shot a solar shield with your Whisper, which I'm not sure if you can or not, even with Solar, solar Singe on, let me know. If anyone's out there, not got the cart list, and can one-shot a solar shield, let me know. It's important. Because if you cannot one-shot a, a, a solar shield with your Whisper, you're not going to get the stagger, uh, stuff like that. It just makes it way harder. Way harder. Um, but on avoiding an arc week, I know for definite if you've got like 30-40% catalyst, you're not going to be able to one-shot shields. On this week, it might be more forgiven, but I don't know because mine's master worked. So I thought I'd mention that. Also, another thing that dictates this is your power level. So I'm only 385. So if you have a full set of Solicitor's gear, go ahead put that on. Uh, I know it's rubbish stats, but... Hopefully you've masterworked it. Probably anybody who's got it's masterworked it by now. Um, I have this set on the Warlock, but I haven't bothered with the Hunter yet. But, like I said, power level um, in this game, if you are under the requirement, so it's 400 light, if you are under that, you're going to get handicapped because of it. Um, so, the higher light you are, the closer you are to 400, the better as well, just thought I'd mention. In terms of the Mananans I was talking about, so I have three. I have Void Arc Solar in my inventory. And the rooms are going to work. Um, you're going to have to have one on different for each room. Although, for the first so for the first room, the predominant uh, shield is Solar. So I don't even bother putting a Solar Mananan on. You could, if you wanted to, but you don't even need to because you've got Whisper to do the Solar Shields for you. When we come to the second room, you're going to need uh, a Void Mananen. There's a lot of Void uh, Shields for Witches and Acolytes, Taken Acolytes, stuff like that. So voids, you think. Then when we get to the final room, there's a load of Arc Shields, so I end up putting an Arc Mananen on to deal with that. So it's nice to have three Scout Rifles. It doesn't have to be Mananen, just a Scout Rifle. An Inagual, I can't pronounce it, but the whatever the Pulse Rifle's called. Um, Having three of them would be good also. That's a really good gun. 
So, um, also, bring, bring a Polaris Lance just in case. If you run out of all power weapon ammo and you're exhausted of it and you've got no more time, a Polaris Lance will be a safety net for you as it does do a lot of damage to these bosses, especially with it being Solar Singe weak. As for armor, we're using Stompies. We're using the Stompies for the jumping puzzle so that we can um, get through it as quickly as possible. Obviously, it improves our jump and everything. Um, and then we will swap to Alpheus Rig uh, as we are running Night Stalker. Which on Night Stalker, we'll be running Top Tree, Vortex Grenade, Marksman's Dodge, and most importantly, Triple Jump. You need Triple Jump on for the jump puzzle. Don't try with Strafe or High Jump. Yes, you can do it with that, but... You want you want triple jump one, I think. That's the uh, best jump, especially with stompies. So as you can see, we're on Night Stalker, the usual loadout, and probably the better loadout. I just wanted to do something different, but the better loadout would be Arc Strider, Raiden Flux, and swapping between Lucky Raspberry when you're not using your super, and then swapping back to Raiden Flux when you are. Um, but I'm not going to talk too much about that. There's plenty of vids on that, so just. Have a watch of a, a vid, somebody doing it with Arc Strider if you want to do it with that one. That's the main bulk of it, uh, onto the run. Right, so as soon as you spawn in, you want to jump onto this little rock. Uh, turn round, jump onto there, and then jump up here. Then you can uh, take out the blade. So, with the blade, I have a magazine devils, it takes me two mags. Or just under two mags, a little less than two mags to take out a blight. With a nade, maybe a little less. So with the jumping puzzle, you want to be real careful with your jumps. You, you've got to go fast, but you've got to be methodical about what you're doing. And like like so here, when we're jumping through, I can use my uh, marksman's dodge to kind of get through it a little quicker. Now this jump here gotta take a big run up like I did and really space out your jumps you can only do this with stompies I think I've done it once without stompies and it, you've got to be perfect with stompies you're okay with that jump you want to come round and then jump up jump across with these blocks you, you need to learn on how to and how and when they um, come out and when they don't like I know with this last rock uh, this is going to come right back out straight away. So as soon as on that last one, you need to run past it. And having a manana in your hand or a lightweight weapon is going to help. You like to jump uh, around this Sophia thing on the wall. And then you jump on this block. We will be taking the shortcut as well. Not really shortcut anymore because everybody does it now, I guess. Uh, you got to be careful with that jump not to hit a block that sometimes spawns above you. You just got to jump real low. This isn't too bad to do, it's when you get halfway you get problems, just shoot a jump around if you do, because there's a pit to the left of you. With if with the stompies you can make uh, the second platform, you just need to plan when the um, last waves. The more times you do this, uh, the more you get a feel for when things happen like that, with the, mo uh, with the waves. So I'm glad this happened in the run actually. Because the door can knock you out and kill you. Look, Lakeside Stomp is on, I was good. You want to jump up to your right and make this platform. And then you go to the back right um, pull. Be careful not to take fall damage here. So I like to do one jump because sometimes you can die from fall damage. Sometimes you don't. It's just weird the physics. Sometimes. Uh, I like to have a marksman's dodge to skip through the sh uh, shortcut there. Helps me. Now we're just running across this platform. As soon as we get to a crack there, I like to jump a little quicker. This jump can be awkward sometimes, just going it at an angle, so best I can say. And this jump is also awkward, so you can hit the sides, but it's all timing. Once you get there, you want to uh, switch any equipment. So if you were doing Arc Strider, same with that. You would switch what you need. Okay, so... Now, 
we go in biz straight away behind this blade uh, and this is where we set up for the first bit if you like sometimes the major gets stuck you see he's stuck in a hole there that does help if that happens so you're just setting up from here I'm waiting for my box breathing here uh, as I want to try and kill this guy in two shots I can't two shot him at my light without box breathing so those are the locations of all the snipers on the first phase now I'm just kind of I'm kind of waiting out my tether I'm pretty close you can shoot these bombs away by the way so I end up killing one for all I, I want to leave them all alive um, as I want them for nade energy and tethers so we're going to round them up and we're going to tether exactly here this is the best place and you can use your grenades kill all the thrall and then quickly come around this point and you tether the mages you can nade them as well your tether behind you will still be up uh, so you can take advantage of it I love tether for this first room I prefer it to axe right actually not only that they're all marked as well so that's good as they often hide you get a lot of bricks in this room as well um, so don't be afraid to use heavy even on red bars this is one time I like uh, keen scout in PvE so now there's not a lot left because the tethers took took out most of him still good you've still got to be careful hang out on the top platforms that's what you'll notice from what I'm doing I'm rarely going on the ground as I really really wanted flawless I didn't want any depths in this one you can use your smoke as well it's a real good ability to suppress them because the bubbles that they put up are annoying so at this point you need to do an ammo run if you haven't got max heavy and stuff. Um, you want to time these blasts and in this room you want to tether also. Go in vis immediately and then you can nade and take out what you can with your tether. And that, that clears out that pretty good actually, the tether. Okay, so now with the second room, we've now switched to the void room. We were we was on the solar vo room, now we're on the void room. You want to snipe that um, knight on the perch first. Go in vis, wait for box breathing, and then focus second knight in the corner. If I'd hit my crit, um, it would have been down already. But if not, you can hang behind these stairs and his flames can't hit you. So this is a real good spot. Once the knight's down, I, you want to focus these uh, acolytes. Once you've cleared that out, the next uh, thing that I like to do is start sniping at the back of the room, just in this little gap here that you see. I like to get those two snipers. Now at this point, I was contemplating which way, which method to do. There is different ways. Um, but I ultimately decided to go in V's and go on top of the perch. We go in V's so that the knight doesn't do his solar blast attack. Because if he does that, you're dead. You're just about dead. But it's very important to take him out first. Your next target is the wizard. Um, once the knight and the wizard's down, this room becomes a whole lot easier. So now you're just taking out all the snipers. I forgot that there was a second wizard up there, I was lucky there, because the wizard is usually shooting at you. Same again, you want to take the shield down and then finish the witch off. Just a couple of snipes, it's okay. Okay, so now your attention is the void shield, the acolytes that I was talking about. You're going to have three pairs of two, so two at the back, in mid and right below you. So you want to just work your way down. Try not to confront them all at once because they do wreck. You can also nade down below as your vortex nades goes through the auras of the blight, which I find interesting. If a, an acolyte's hiding in, its aura, in the aura of the blight, the vortex nade can still get them. Pretty good. 
It's the same as well for when an Acolyte puts a bubble up. You get the Vortex Knight in the bubble, you'll take him out. So now, your next target is this Knight, but you need to take him out as quickly as you can. You want to sit in his solar shield. So now we have a Knight uh, Wizard, which is annoying to most, but I have a good way to take him out. Do not smoke the Wizard, as the Wizard will just start wandering everywhere. Your best just to take down the shield, and then one shot. So, another thing as well I see people doing in the runs is not taking down this aura. Uh, to consistently survive him, it's best to take it down. It's literally, you're wasting 10 seconds. Well, it's not a waste anyway. You're just ensuring that you get through. What's interesting with this is you can start working on uh, the uh, snipers outside without taking down the door. Once you've done that, you want to, I like to snipe just one acolyte. One sniper, go in Viz, come back. You can do a nade and then snipe the two mages that spawn behind you. Once you've done that, you still have one I still have one more sniper to take out. Just an easy snipe. And with the next room, uh, well not the next room but the kind of just uh, next door, there's a load of scions. You can avoid them all. Uh, I like to go in Viz, just for safety, you don't have to, you can literally run to here. Um, the aura is like a three shot, and you can jump down. So now we're in the final boss room, and like I said, um, the burns rotate, so now we're Ark, Ark's the main shield. Okay, so on my Teva, uh, I didn't know the best strat to be honest, but um, I figured just wh why not just use it straight away. I get quite unlucky, because I was wanting to snipe this uh, Major, but he, he gets gets in the aura which is um, unfortunate it usually works out better than that it's just unfortunate you walked into it once you have done your tether you come back to this section here you don't shoot any of the blights down leave all blights up you can use the blights as kind of cover for you but with the axe strider the strat would be to kill them all with your suit but obviously we can't do that as good this is where the night stock is not as good. It's this section right here, but you can we can get round it. I think night stock is still it's more consistent for staying alive. Maybe need ammo, heavy ammo. You see how it helps me that way. So you want to work on the major to your right first, well right and mid. The one on left. If you do, if you stand where I am, he's AI, he always just stands at the back, doesn't do anything at the back left. It's just something he always does. Which is good for us. We don't want three mages attacking us all at the same time. Try to work on, work on the Furlanxes first. Then you can work your way up. You could snipe these Centurions as well. What I opted for was to save heavy, full heavy, because if I need heavy later on we're going to have three bricks on the floor, which is quite a lot of ammo, so rather than wasting one shot, I'd just rather just take them all down, which we have eight minutes, so I got here with a half decent time. Oh, I do use three shots, pardon me, but he went to cover. So I end up picking up just one of the bricks. I still have two bricks on the floor for later. Okay, so now uh, you leave the last Centurion alive. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, if you kill the Centurion while all the Blights are still up, you will not have a fun time trying to snipe these bosses. Because it's something in their AI to hide in these Blights. So it's best to take down every single one. Because there's the boss that does his shadow move on you. He'll hide in the first blight that I'm looking at now. There's the taken knight who will hide in a blight on his side if you don't take it down. And the centurion will hide in this blight and the one in the back. Obviously not always, but there's a chance of it and we want to eliminate that. We don't want any blades up at all. If you were speedrunning it, which I'm not, of course, you know, you can limit to taking down maybe three blades, maybe two. But you, then you're relying on boss RNG, which I don't like. 
but be cautious of the uh, s the blasts from the Centurion. If you're standing in a blight, his blast cannot track you. Um, but once you take down the blight, it will then start to track you. If he's inside a blight, the blast can't get out. So the blight auras kind of stop the tracking on those blasts, which I am taking advantage of here. Okay, so we've left the left one up last, which is the hardest because he's annoying. This this um, major will hang around this blade. So my strategy is just to put a couple of shots in and then go in V's and get out of the way. Like I say, once I start taking out that Centurion, we're going to have bosses spawning in and we don't want that. Uh, as we want all blades down first. Also, I want to be close to the back of the map for when the boss spawns in, as that's important for the way I do it also. As soon as that uh, Centurion's down, we head for the back of the map. Now, the boss will spawn in at the back, or at the front of the map, should I say. But if you get up here quick enough, it will stop him from doing his move, his shadow move, whatever it's called. Uh, which is very annoying to me when, when we're trying to snipe him. But if you see here, he's not... He's not doing his manoeuvre. If I was a little closer to him, he would definitely be doing his move on me, which would makes him a, a lot harder to snipe. So there's kind of three rocks at the back. There's two on the left, and there's one on the right side. I'm literally just standing on, on all these three blocks. It is a slower method, but it's more reliable. You're less likely to miss crits, therefore you're going to get white nail to proc, um, and you're less likely to take damage. We're just literally, um, he just started to do his manoeuvre there, but the reason why he done it is because I fell off the rock, if you noticed. That proves the point. Staying on these back three rocks helps. Then you'll have the knight to your left, which is less annoying, but he hides behind the pillar that he's close to. If the bosses are completely out of sight, just keep rotating, maybe put a couple of scout rifle shots down there to change what they're doing. My point is just to try and never miss a crate, um, which I have missed a couple. And also to get box breathing propped. Take the full advantage of the solar singe. morning I'm just kind of waiting just to see so this boss is still here good still looking for that first boss that's spawning I don't know where he is he happens to be on the far right which I didn't notice but here he is watch out run out of ammo low on my primary ammo you see there so I use a grenade there to finish off the last guy and my problem is ammo so like I said having bricks on the floor helps and, and having invis like this also helps so I go invis um, to get a couple of bricks and then run back. And go back to the place. This also stops the big guy from doing his blasts. Say on uh, the purple boy blasts, or less likely to. Yes, we get the take a knight. He's no problem. Now we just have the uh, centurion. Which what the centurion will do is he'll, there's a pillar. There's the short pillar, and there's um, yeah, the short pillar. He'll kind of go between the left and right side of this pillar just what he does he'll just keep going between the two what I also notice is if you aim, aim down sides for too long he starts to move which I was trying to get box breathing so 
So yeah, it's just basically the strat of now finishing him off from a distance. If you end up losing ammo, like I nearly did, you would of course you would put on um Plotus Lance. Plotus Lance would, would finish him for you. So the guy's one shot, run out of ammo, just want to tether him, stick a Vortex on him and that's good. I could have done this a lot quicker but I'd rather have done it with no deaths. But those are little tips um, in order to solo. I mean if you're on an Axe Rider you get it a lot quicker and you could, that means you, you could take your time at the boss and you'd be no problem. But yeah that was a guide on the um, Heroic version of the Whisper. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.